Hi there, welcome to Architect Interview Question Series. And in this series, we are tackling many questions around system design, architecture design, and different concepts of architecture. And it also covers a lot of vocabulary that uh, architects use. So it's good to understand these concepts and start using in our day-to-day -day conversations. And this is from Knowledge Powerhouse. The question is, what is the difference between strong and eventual consistency models? So there are different kind of consistency models in the data databases in our systems. So they are like strong consistency or eventual consistency. Let's see what is the difference between these two. Let's say you have a database table on your computer. So it's an example from your own uh, system. And in that table, you are afraid that your computer can crash. If it crashes, you will lose the data. So now what you do is that uh, like you can um, make some kind of a replica of it, or you can take some backup of it. So in such a case, like uh, you want to propagate it. So, I mean, one example is that you can take a backup of this table from your computer on a hard disk, external hard disk. And then from external hard disk, you can take it to some cloud service like Amazon S3. So if you update a record uh, today on the database table, and it will like, you know, if, if you are updating in the night time to the external hard disk, so it will take some time before it goes to the external hard disk. And then maybe once a week, you put it to the Amazon S3, then there is a time like, you know, lag between your data record on the database table on your computer and the database record in the table on Amazon S3. So during all this time, the system will be in some kind of a, like inconsistent state, right? So how do you, like, what do we call these inconsistent states? So you understand the example, right? That you have a computer, you have external hard disk and S3, all three have different, you know, uh, state of the same table and your computer record is for sure like most updated. Now in case of strong consistency, what you'll do is that if you want to have a very consistent system across all these three, then as soon as you make a change to the database table, you have to immediately update the external hard disk and Amazon S3 copy. So all the three has to be updated at the same time. So there are different replicas and these replicas have to be updated at the same time. Now, in such a case, I mean, you may find it impossible to do because like uh, you may have to update your software design to update the external hard disk and update the Amazon S3 at the same time. So which might not be possible. So you may not achieve strong consistency between all these three, right? So like, I mean, if you are creating a database system, I mean, in your own uh, company or some project, there you may have access to multiple replicas and update at the same time and achieve the strong consistency but strong consistency will come at a cost so it will offer you up-to-date data in all the replicas but the cost will be high latency which means same transaction which is taking like maybe one second to process if you have to update at three places at the same time it might take two seconds or three seconds right so that way the request which is coming to update the data will be returned in a more time. So response time will be more, which means there is a high latency. So there's a downgrade of performance in case of strong consistency. So you get some benefit, but you have to pay the cost for it. Whereas in case of eventual consistency, we first update the database table on our computer. Then every night we update the external hard disk with the changes. And every fortnight, like once in two weeks, we update the Amazon S3 with these changes. Now it means eventually after two weeks, all these replicas will be like reaching at the same state, consistent state across all replicas. But if someone reads the record from your computer during these two weeks, then it might be different from your external hard disk or your Amazon S3. So which means we need to make sure that data of each node will get consistent eventually. So in eventual consistency, we say that there is a guarantee that after two weeks it will be consistent, but at the same time, like you know, on all the replicas may be not consistent. So there might be some differences. 
so which means the clients of uh, that system they have to deal with this kind of a situation so now what is the benefit of venture consistency the benefit is that it offers low latency and it's like it offers high availability also so there is a risk that the data which is returned is a stale data but if you see like in cases of like sometimes like websites or some of the like you know just informational data which is not very highly like you know important to be mission critical those data stale data can be still returned so that's what eventual consistency provides and uh, and it's like a popular concept i mean if you see there are some databases that provides eventual consistency, consistency and they are very much in use and we'll give you an example of it uh, cassandra cassandra is a database that provides tunable consistency like it can say that yeah we can go to a like a very strong consistency also but mostly it's eventual consistency where you can see what kind of consistency level you can achieve from different different replicas that you create so in mostly no sql databases eventual consistency is uh, the way to go for and it's a coming from the base model of databases so we did a video on base models so some time back so do watch that video and you'll be happy to understand what is the eventual consistency and what is the base model all right thank you for listening and uh, if you have any questions or comments or if you want some topic to be included do let us know in your comments